happy three year and seven month anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and the first first question is, what is the anniversary celebrating? And I was like, uh, typing up my answers. I don't know. <laughs> uh, three years and seven months because we saw Leslie do this video. And hey, here, here's a special trick. Do this for your booktube friends. I'm doing this for you, Leslie. I'm going to let the video just play in the background on mute. I'm going to jack up your view time. Video is going to go viral just because of that. <laughs> Woohoo! And make sure you smash the like button too. <laughs> In all seriousness, we just saw this and we had some extra time and we thought it'd be fun to kind of do a tag. It's been a while. And this is a great kind of like check in. Like it, it, there's a lot of good questions here about who are we as a channel? I have prepared nothing, which may shock some of you. And crypto here tells me he's actually prepared everything. <laughs> which will shock you equally as much. Not everything. I think I did like what there's 14 questions and I think I have answers for around seven, but we're going to cheat. Mm -hmm. Like we always used to all the time on tags. That's oh, what yeah, we're known for. Yeah. We're known cheaters. We're known cheaters. So this is called <laughs> the booktube anniversary tab, original creator book, your imagination links down below. So we've already answered question one. So question two, what genre or genres does your channel generally focus on? Oh, oh, Alex, I know this one. Pick me. <laughs> I will give it to Crypto for 200. Yes. So we cover traditionally, we have done, uh, well, I guess it's kind of evolved over time. We started off with a lot of sci-fi and, and fantasy, Star Wars-y type stuff. And then over the last two years, we've done literary fiction uh, with a heavy helping of short stories and now sprinkled in a few poems here or there. Do you think the, um, what do you think about the breakdown? So we did ask the question about like, you know, what do people like? I guess not surprisingly, people who have drawn to this channel generally like the structure of the channel in terms of short stories to, to longer form books. What do you think? Do you think doing all the short stories has helped you in terms of either reading more broadly or being able to discuss more deeply certain topics? As an educated individual, I thought that I was really good at reading. And I realized that I kind of sucked at it at the beginning. And I had to work really hard to learn how to deeply analyze and get more meaning out of a story. And I think that short stories are a great way to be able to do that on a larger scale. Because when you grab a seven, 800 page novel, that in itself is very intimidating. But when you grab a three page story, and then you can learn how to break down and see the clues that authors are leaving along the way, that's going to help you in enhance your experience when you get to those larger novels. Uh, so I'm so glad that we have introduced and, and done so many short stories because they have been invaluable for uh, honing my analyzing skills. I, I, I'm sorry. I laughed at the beginning there because I thought you were being ironic when you're like, as an educated individual, but, but then you were, <laughs> you were saying a person who has gotten an education, you feel like you've, you've pushed it further. I, I'm sorry. That's why I was laughing. Cause <laughs> I Fair thought you're going a different direction at first. Um, what are you most proud of on your channel in the last year? Well, I say uh, we we hit over 20,000 subs within the last year, not over the last year, but over the entirety of the channel. We hit that, which is pretty amazing because just two guys chatting about books, uh, you know, from 150 years ago, I didn't think we'd ever hit 20,000. Uh, I was, you know, we made a whole video when we hit like a thousand or something, cause that was incredible. Uh, but also that we have produced over 80 videos in 2022. Uh, and we have done two videos every week for an entire year for several years now. Uh, I'm pretty proud of that. I think that's pretty amazing. And mostly that's due to you, obviously, with the scheduling and the uh, editing and everything. But, uh, you know, I get to show up and look pretty. So I've done my part. <laughs> I, I was about to ask. I was like, what do you mean we produced 80 videos? <laughs> I've done a little bit. All right. Um, the next question is a little strange because we ain't an arcish channel. Do you, do you know what an arc is when it asks that? No, I have no clue what ARCs mean. Advanced reader copy. So usually before it goes oh. out publicly, it's it's a way for authors to sometimes get feedback, uh, a way for them while they're still working out the kinks of some things. There's there's spelling errors and, and stuff like that. It still might be going through copy editors and stuff like that. So uh, those you can't sell. They're, they're very, they've got a different cover even sometimes. So we don't typically do that. We've technically done it once behind the scenes, but we're not an ARC channel. 
our, our authors are dead. If our if we got an arc from yeah. one of our dead authors, that'd be freaky. <laughs> that would be amazing. Imagine getting like an arc Poe story. <gasps> or an arc Dostoevsky. Dostoevsky oh, we'd be the, the envy grave. of the world. <laughs> <laughs> we signed up. Yeah, we got the new D. Yeah, you, you want to hear about it? <laughs> yeah, we got Brothers Karamazov Part 2. <laughs> Gosh, that'd be amazing. I would sell my soul for that. All right, number five. What types of videos do you most like to do on your channel? Uh, as I said before, I've kind of grown to love the short stories. I feel obviously the big novels are our bread and butter. The before you videos are very popular. Uh, they're they're a lot of fun to make. Uh, uh, Una puts a lot of effort into those with the editing and everything, and the scripting, and we have to do a lot of takes of recording and everything, but. Uh, the short stories are just so much fun. They're 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 bite sized candy. If if the novels are a king size bar, then uh, the the short stories are Halloween candy. But I like videos like this too. Uh, they're just the ones that we've done silly. We haven't done a skit in a really long time. I loved making the skits. Uh, it gets us to be kind of flex our uh, creative side, uh, and and I like being kind of an actor in front of the camera too. So that's really fun. Yeah. I don't know what my favorite is in terms of the process of doing. I'm one of those gluttons where the before you reads are the most stressful, but maybe at the same time, I feel the most reward for them too. like they're the most valuable to me afterwards because it pushes me to really articulate and not that I it's one where you have to take a lot of things into consideration in terms of the visuals and how often entertainment is into it. I'll tell you, I made a mistake. So we just recently pushed out that before War and Peace video, right? And we've already gotten two comments. Like, one was very acerbic, where it was kind of, uh, they, they said, I committed intellectual suicide with this one line. <laughs> Ooh. That's pretty, <laughs> Which I uh... thought was, I thought it was, it was pretty funny when I read it, actually. And then another person commented on mm -hmm. it, but they were much more, you could tell they were much more, like, discussional. And, um... I kind of asked him, I said, look, well, what do you mean? I don't think we really talked about funding of the Revolutionary War. And he said, well, you said this line. And I'm like, oh, that's the line the other guy said. I, I just, I was trying to be funny and I'm just not funny sometimes. And that, that's, that's one of those things that, like when you fall flat with humor, particularly in those animated videos, oh, I got to relive the horror and people rubbing it in my face for mm. years because people still watch for eternity. Them. Oh yeah. I still get comments uh, from three years ago when we made we made a big mistake we talked about how uh when dostoevsky went to the work prison instead of calling it work prison we, we called, called it, it the gulag, gulag. Oh, yeah that was that was a huge <laughs> mistake and i have got to i've got to have my face pushed in that every so often with comments so, so while they're the most rewarding and in nine 95 percent of the time that you get a lot of good interactions out of them whew, there's some punishment in them too <laughs> Well, I'm sorry that you have to suffer through that, but, uh, you know, I'm sure all of those people that are critiquing you are perfect and make no mistakes ever. <laughs> no, it, honestly, this sounds, this is one of those lines where someone says, I'd be like, oh, jump off your, jump off. I don't believe you for a second, but it's true. Those comments, I'm the type of person when I get feedback like that, not that I'm looking for it, but uh, it drives me like, I'm like, okay, I got to get better at this. And you'll see actually in the, in the War and Peace video, I actually recorded the audio where, what did I say? I said that the, the Russian czars were coronated by God. And, and for something, I, it just kept bugging me and it kept bugging me. And I went back and I'm like, that's not the right word. I'm like, if I look up the articles, like, like what, what are the word choices they use? And it's anointed because God's the only one that can anoint, right? I'm like, that's the word I'm looking for. So I actually had to like go back and redo the audio. And I never would really push myself if I if I didn't start listening to those things where I'm like, I know something's wrong. So sometimes it, it may be in the spirit of avoiding all the negativity, you, you push yourself to get better. And maybe that's why I'm going to say, okay, final answer before videos are the best ones that I like to work on. You hear it here, folks. Una thrives on negative motivation. So Give me that punishment. <laughs> Ooh, punish me, people. I love it. All right. Number six. What type of videos do you like to watch on other people's channels? Uh, so I'm very cheap, as many of you probably know. 
and I watch review channels so I know if a book is worth my time, which is the most valuable commodity I have as a middle-aged man now, and uh, uh, worth my money because I don't want to be wasting money on a book or an Audible credit, those juicy Audible credits. So I, I like to watch reviews of uh, other books and stuff for my fun reads, my brain candy. Otherwise, I just you know do what Una tells me. <laughs> All right, this next one's kind of interesting. I don't know where we're going with this one. Was there anything you tried on your channel in the last year that didn't work? I didn't understand that question. Uh, that's one of the few I don't have an answer for. Uh, we've had some concepts in the background of things that we wanted to try. Um, we talked through and discussed that we thought maybe wouldn't work, um, like the idea of uh, us drinking, you know, different types of whiskeys and reviewing those. <laughs> Remember, we talked about that a couple of years ago. That probably wouldn't that work a on a book. That was a terrible channel. idea. I'm glad we didn't go through with that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Drink up, my friend. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, we've we've never like pushed a video and be like, oh, we're never going to do that type of video again. But we have evolved over time. We we don't. Our format is not the same. So I guess that that didn't work maybe for like the algorithm per se, but yeah, I don't know. Well, we're not, we're not algorithm chasers, right? We, yeah. what's unique about us is our channel is very much that they always say you have to enjoy the process more so than the product, right? Like you have to enjoy making what you do, right? Like if you, if you yeah. love pies, that's great that you love pies, but if you hate making pies, you probably don't want to be working in a pie business, right? <laughs> And for us, the product isn't the main reason why we do this. We have two people sharing thoughts, and sometimes we try to cram it down, right? Like, if you think about it, most people prefer like a 10, 15 minute video, and we try to keep ours around there, but more often than not, it might be 15, 17 minutes. But we also have two people sharing the, our minds, right? So the process is what I enjoy the most of us trying to work out a thought, and, and we're collaborating, right? It's not just we're talking. Because we do take into consideration when one of us shares something, we don't want to repeat the other person's thoughts. We do get the idea of what we're trying to create. And I think together we're wrestling a problem out of articulating thoughts and feelings on something, but still trying to keep it in a package that is fun to work on, I think. Oh, yeah. I think that's perfectly said. We, we, we It's conversation. It's always been about the conversation for us. We started having conversation about Thrawn and then on to Gunslinger and here we are many, many years later. It's always been about just the conversation and we just happen to record it and put it out for everybody else to enjoy too. <laughs> Balls, what question are we on? Is it eight? We're on eight. Eight. We're going yeah. to go with eight for now. We're on eight. All right. Is there anything that you've done on your channel in the last year that you won't continue doing next year? Ooh, naughty. <laughs> oh. Uh, I don't know. What, what do you think? Have, have we put out any types of videos that you don't want to do anymore or that we nixed? I don't remember us... I feel like maybe sometimes when I look back at certain videos, it might be too preachy. Like it, it gets too much into me trying to convince someone. And I don't think that's where I want. That's not where I want my conversation to be. Right. And, and maybe there's times where we're trying to convince an angle. Right. Or, or an understanding. But I don't know if our place is necessarily that of influence I'll just leave it at that. That that's that's the one the one area where I'm trying to watch it. I like that answer. That's good. Next question. Is, number nine. Is there anything that you plan to do more uh, of this year? Well, we definitely we said that we were going to do more novels uh, because that's what was was asked in the survey. So we're going to try to push more of those out while continuing the number of short stories. I personally would like to do a few more skits. We haven't done one in a really long time. Uh, those are always kind of fun. And uh, again, that's more of the process where you and I, behind the scenes, uh, get to have a two, three-hour conversation and make scripts and talk about costumes and planning. And uh, I, I, I you know, get my wife involved or my sister or my niece. And I love that they all uh, are very supportive of that and help. And that's always just a lot of fun. They're, they're kind of similar to me. Number 10, is there anything new that you plan to add to your channel next year? As opposed to, is there anything that you plan to do more of this year? That was no, next like, year, was number, 2024? Like, was nine, well, was number nine personal? And is this one about the channel? I, these are these are not fair 
for end of the night recording Una to be at. These are way too complex for, for me to be winning. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I apologize. I'm not thinking about 2024. Uh, it's February 2nd, Groundhog Day. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, Is it next year? So in 2024, what are we going to add? I have a third person. Time travel. We're going to add time <laughs> yeah. travel. That's what's that's what's going to happen next year. All right, number 12. What equipment do you use to film your videos? Cameras. Number 13. I, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'll, I'll put a link to my camera stuff down below. Do, do you know what your camera is? What did you buy me? <laughs> I didn't buy you nothing. You bought that on your own. Uh, it's a Canon something something. It's a little Canon $300 camera. Little camcorder, little cami, little cami, and everything else. I think you have. Well, and then I have the the blue yeti, and then what is my big light? The big um, light. You did buy me that Amaran one hundred D, an Amaran one hundred D. You like my wife and my mom or something like that. That meant for for Christmas. I'm your sugar daddy. I'm, yeah, I'll make you. I'll and make you. You got me all the little tiny lights that are on the bookshelf. Mm-hmm. Uh, you helped me pick out the Govi lights that are the ones behind me. So see, don't sell yourself short, sugar daddy. You, no, <laughs> you, you make it all happen. All right, uh, number 14, what is your one comma best piece of advice, no comma, you can give to another booktuber, question mark? <laughs> I think make sure you have a really good partner editor. <laughs> <laughs> jerk <laughs> no and honestly you just got to be passionate about it uh and not worry about clicks views and likes it just if you like doing it keep doing it uh if if the clicks the views and the likes are what drive you then i think that you're in the wrong genre of of youtube because you've got to do movies or video games or something that's high profile or society, you know, if, if, you know, unless you have a specific stick, uh, booktube doesn't have the, the millions of views and clicks and likes. So you just, you gotta love that you do it. Yeah. I I think Leslie had a really good answer on this one. We'll put a link to hers cause we're, we're going to force her. She did. Yeah. Yeah. She, she, she went through a, a good spiel about don't do it for the money. Don't do it for that. But I would add on to that. It's not just the money. It's to your point about the uh, the likes and the comments. Don't do it for the output. All right, let's go back to, and I'm not trying to soapbox it, but let's go back to the previous name because this is true in life too. You you almost roll your eyes every time someone says like, if you love your job, you'll never work a day in your life. And you just want to punch someone when you say that, right? Yeah, throw but, a punch them, totally. It, it, mm. And I do too, I do too. <laughs> but But the nuance is honestly, if you love the process, then you will you, you don't even need to worry about the product. If you like working in in reading, which I'm assuming you do while you're here, and you in, and you learn to love to wrestle with what the book means and how to articulate it and maybe you're like I suck at this and I want to get better at it. That's okay. Live in that process of getting better at it and the struggle through it because it's a skill, not just for articulating your thoughts on a book or understanding another person's point of view. But that's something that's going to work through through life, through working with others, through understanding others, and it's a worthwhile endeavor in my opinion. In my opinion, so so enjoy the process and the struggle, and and you will enjoy your booktube output that much more. I promise. I think that brings us to like number fourteen: is what is the best part about having a booktube channel? Is that process for us? I started on my crappy laptop webcam with headphone mics you can go to the very first video it is awful and i've i've loved just hanging out and uh, you know oh let's tweak the lights and you know let's get the new camera and let's you know oh you got to get the shine off your head here and uh like there were a few videos there where i didn't do my hair or shave and it's like i just i've loved how we've evolved and changed things and if you haven't noticed we got new shirts finally uh like and and that these are originals like we talked about this and we came up with these ideas and uh i i think that that the best part is having a friend and and making a community uh more so than than the product do you think you've 
we, we like it's a very loose thing just to be like we've grown right like like what does that mean what are some of the the key things that like were light bulb moments for you because you know sometimes doing youtube you do consider the algorithm right like like how often should you put out videos like should you be consistent quantity versus quality and you realize with booktube there's 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 no huge reward there's no magic at the end of the rainbow right like this is about community and such what were some of those rainbow moments that allowed you to enjoy the process more? Like what were, what were some of those things in terms of like you talked about how all those things that you just worked on what were the light bulb moments for you? Give, give me, give me one. I think one of the light bulb moments was when we talked about back of Macatory. Uh, you know, I can't say it, yeah, but, yeah, but it's fine. I, I got you. We, we, we realized that in the moment we couldn't review something and that we didn't have the answers and that we don't mm. need the answers. Mm. And I realized that uh, you don't necessarily have to be the smartest person in the room. You don't necessarily have to understand something to get fulfillment out of it, get enjoyment mm. out of it. Uh, that you don't have to... I think one of the biggest ones was... Um, when we read, uh, um, what was the Flannery O'Connor story? And our perspectives were very different, but we were coming to the same conclusion. And I realized that it's okay to not think the same and come to the same conclusion. And that, that was a big aha moment because I didn't think that would be possible, but it was. You don't remember which one it was, though? I can't remember what 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 story was that. Um, uh, come on, brain. The guy that takes the family. Good man is hard to find. Yeah, yeah. When we read "Good Man," uh, a good man is hard to find. We we kind of came from that from different angles, uh, but we came to the same conclusion, and and that was a big aha moment for me as well. Okay, okay. All right, final words. There's no final question. This is just a final worlds. We're, we've been on this platform now three years, seven months. Who knows how long it goes on for? Who knows how long till you stop enjoying something, right? Like, like some people do things their entire life. Great, right? Some people do it for a little while and then they quit. If you were to time capsule yourself right now and in a certain period of time, five years, whether you're still doing the channel, whether you've moved on, what's the one thing you would tell five years from now, crypto? Read slower. Is plan that because better. like, <laughs> plan better, come on. <laughs> uh, is that because reading slower is more rewarding? Or, or why read slower? I think... I've always been a gotta get to the end type guy. Not only am I a peaks and valley reader, but I am a ending can make or break it type reader. And that is something else I've learned from this channel is that the story in between the beginning and the end is usually more important than the beginning and the end. Hmm. That's deep. That's deep, friend. <laughs> yeah, that's my in the bar Dostoevsky chat. <laughs> this, is, this is your marma, marmalade off speech. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I'm still waiting until we get that arc approved from him. But until then, stay tuned. Subscribe if you want to hear about the Dostoevsky arc when it launches. My name is Ben Una. Appreciate you spending some time with us on today. Peace out. Crypto out. Peace.